Hola and welcome back to the channel. We are continuing with our Vampire Alone in the Darkness by 101 Games, a Brazilian, a Brazilian company, yet another great Brazilian RPG product. And we are currently at, at night five. So this is following on from night four, where we had that uh, important event, that multi-layer event which had us go down to the harbour to try to stop this vampire from doing a lot of damage, <laughs> bringing danger to the town. So we kind of thwarted that plot, although the vampire in the threat, the elder vampire is still at large and is still in that harbour section to my knowledge. Um, so yeah, so night five, Leslie Vincent, my ghoul vampire, we have to we have to hunt prey tonight because I think it was the first night I found my favorite prey, so that kept me going for four days. Now that time's up, so I'm gonna have to hunt my favorite prey again to give me that little bit of a window where I don't have to worry about the demon taking over because I haven't been eating. Um, okay, I did make one mistake in the last video i did actually make a note at the bottom of the, of the of the screen i should actually have eight experience not five because when you're doing an important event you get one experience for each location so in that event i actually went to four different locations four different challenges so the rules say that you get one xp per location or per um challenge so I actually got a little bit more experience than I thought. So I now have eight experience. Two more, and I can actually do something. If I remember correctly, I think I can get another power. Let's just quickly check that while we're talking about it. Uh, so yeah, you can learn a new power from a dark gift from your cast. So every cast has three like gift groups that they can choose from. Um, it costs 10 experience for that. If you want to get a power from another gift group that is not part of your cast, it costs 15. Now, do I want to save up for that, or do I want to get another one from my cast? Hmm, I'll have to think about that. Because normally, you only get one XP per night yeah, from resting. But like we found last in the last session, you can get more XP from certain missions, from certain events. So, that's what we have to do. So, I have changed my XP. I have also added the plus one will already. It doesn't look good. I've only got two will now. That's really, really, really not good. Um, I think on night five tonight, on this episode, I may have to kind of avoid doing anything remotely dangerous because I've only got two potential rerolls. And after the second one, I kind of just give up, go home and go to sleep. Because when you reduce your will to zero, you basically are unmotivated and you don't have the will to do anything more. So that would basically put an end to the night if my will gets down to zero. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to have to be a little bit selective tonight. But we'll see what happens. But I do have to find prey. I do have to find my favorite prey. So let us continue. Let us go to the section where we look at the different actions that we can do. Right, so night five. So we are starting in Hex OC4, Old City or Old Town 4. This is where I currently have my my haven, my, my lair at the moment in the sewers. At some point, I'm gonna wanna, I'm gonna wanna get a proper lair. There may be a building which is linked to the sewers, so that, is a plot, a plan for the future, but it's going to be expensive. Uh, and again, I can't exactly sign the lease myself, so I may have to get one of my servants. I do have one servant, Leon Cook, the physician. He may have to um, sign the lease or take out the mortgage for me. But it's going to be expensive. Right, so... Uh, the sequence of events per night, you have 12 hours to muck around and play around with. First of all, you choose an action, and then after the action, you choose the, or you roll for the event. After the event, if you want to do more stuff, you can. You then just do other actions, rolling, 
taking the time, etc. But you've got to make sure that you're back in cover before daylight. Now, over here in Malaysia, uh, it starts getting dark at about seven. So that's when I'm putting my, myself as a start time. Now, where do we want to go this time? Now, these are positions where there could potentially be danger. Okay, this one's not necessarily danger. This is the, the older vampire that I know, Isaac Perez. He owes me, he owes me a favor. This is where his art museum is. Um, but this is where I found that uh, vampire hunter. And this, yeah, this was last, in the last session, this was the harbor where I thwarted that other elder vampire. Now, this is a gaki. These are like the oriental Yakuza style vampires who don't take offense lightly, you know? So this, this gaki is going to be out for blood when she figures out that somebody's screwed her up. So maybe I want to avoid that hex for the time being. Again, I'm not too sure exactly how the events would play into past encounters. Like I say, I don't want to read all the events. I kind of want to save them for surprises. So I don't know whether there, are, there is the potential of running into previous encounters, in which case this could be extremely deadly for me, and this could be extremely deadly. So at the moment, I'm, I think I'm just going to avoid these hexes just in case there are events of that nature. Good, good, good. Right. So like I say, this is the uh, promenade where we have the beach, the amusement park. And this is where we also have all those homeless people. So this is where I will probably go to hunt my favorite prey. But that also then means that this is where the event is going to take place. Now, do I want an event where I feed? Or should I take a different action first? Then do the event and then go to the promenade for, for food. Now, here's the thing. I, I don't have a lot of rerolls, and hunting for favorite prey is mind survival. I don't, oh, I do have survival. Okay. So I'd be having a four plus two is six, a plus six to the roll. So I might not have too much problem with that. But like I say, I've only got two rerolls. If I screw it up and I have to use the rerolls in my action and the event, I may not, may not want to risk it. Ah. Uh, or should I look for favorite prey somewhere else? Because being a gaki, <laughs> not a gaki, being a ghoul, I don't want to be a gaki, being a ghoul, we can only satisfy our bloodlust if we feed on people who died no more than one day before, preferably at the hands of the vampire, uh, who tend to hunt especially beautiful victims, kill them, and then feed. So this is my favorite prey. I can basically feed on anything, but it's not going to satiate my hunger for very long. I need to find a favorite prey. So preferably beautiful victims or good looking victims, but they've got to be dead within one day, which basically means I've pretty much got to kill them. Now, I could go to another sector and try to find prey, but I, I, like I say, down here, we've got all the homeless. There's less, less chance of the bodies being well, not necessarily being found, but in terms of in, in police investigations and stuff. So maybe I can go somewhere else. Now, we have done events. We've had an event in the industrial sector. That was last. Even though the event took place in the harbour, the event was actually rolled on the industrial district. So I haven't actually rolled on the harbour table or the fields or parks table yet. So, hmm, I think, yeah, let's, let's go to, let's, let's try a, a, an area of parkland. And again, I don't, I don't want anything to happen too close to my home just yet. So what I'll do is I think I will travel to this hex here, which is hex F1. So on my motorcycle, each hex is half an hour. So that will take, one and a half hours. So I'm going to use my motorcycle. Sorry about my handwriting. Motorcycle and I'm going to F1. Fields or Parks 1, which is here. That's going to take one, two, three, an hour and a half. So it is now 8.30. Now, I do, I do need to find my favorite prey before I even think about anything else. 
So I'm going to have to search this park. I mean, there could still be homeless. There could still be homeless people here. Not necessarily beautiful people, but at least homeless people. Um, all right, so I'm going to try and hunt favorite prey. Hunt fave prey. So for this <clears throat> favorite prey, mind survival. So I have mind of four. I have survival, which gives me a plus two. So I've got a plus six to the roll. Uh, am I going to get any kind of advantage? Um, shadows. Could I use the shadows? Not necessarily. Probably not in a park. So I don't think I'll give myself an advantage for this. So we are rolling the dice. We need a 10. But I've got a plus 6 to the roll. So I need a, I need a 4 plus to find my prey. We get a 9. We find the prey. Excellent. So that succeeds. So I am now satiated for four nights because your favorite prey. Again, just let me double check just to make sure I don't make a boo boo. Uh, but if I don't favorite prey, um, blah, 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 spirit value. Yes. So like I say, a normal, normal kind of prey that's not your favorite prey will only sustain you for a few hours, but it does help with healing. But your favorite prey will basically satiate your hunger. It will get rid of your hunger for a number of days equal to your spirit. So I am now okay for another four days. Wonderful, wonderful. Again, I put here, okay, for four days. Another four days, I don't have to worry about that. Excellent. However, what I do have to worry about now is <laughs> I've got to roll the event. All right, in terms of time, hunt for favorite prey, we were in, again, I don't think that, I think that should be fields, not badlands. So hunt for favorite prey, two hours. So it is now half past 10. We have our event. So event is going to be in the fields. And what do we roll? Again, I'm just making a note of what we roll so I can reference it later in case I forget. Um, right. Oops, move my card. Didn't want to do that, did I? Right, so event, we are going to be in the fields. In the fields and values. Right, fields, the fields event. Here we go. Table 10. So we're going to be rolling on here. 2d10, one to determine which, which half and then... Specifically, which one? Right, so white first. We get a 10 and a 5. So 10 means it's in this bottom part. A 5 means here. So again, just let me, just let me write it down. I've got 10 and 5. All right, what have we got? Oh, no. You are faced with an opponent who's looking for trouble. Roll a violent encounter on table 13 or try to run away with a body athletics test. Well, I don't have athletics, so I don't get the plus two, and my body is only three. So I would need to roll a seven plus to evade. Uh, that's not good. Well, okay, let's see, who, let's see who's looking for trouble first. So we have to roll... Let me just write this down. Uh, where's it going to do? We've got opponent looking for trouble. All right, so we've got to roll a violent encounter. Table 13. Right, here we go. So again, 2d10 to find out who we're up against. Please, somebody easy. Uh, white first. We get a 4 and a 3. Three. So a four means we're at the top half, and a three means, ooh, ooh, we're up against a ghost. A ghost manifests nearby with violent intentions. Hmm, where's Zach Bagans when you need him? <laughs> Come on, Zach. Come and help me out. Right, a ghost. So we're up against a ghost. Now, I don't recall... Keep moving these cards. Sorry, guys. All right, I need to see. <laughs> I need to see what these ghosts are like. All right. 
Uh, I haven't had any easy enemies yet. Okay. Mm, ghosts. Health 12, posture 8, will 8. Ghosts are immortal. Don't get sick and don't feel any kind of deprivation that would affect a mortal. Ghosts can move freely through solid objects. Deadly touch. Okay, the ghost deals 5 points of damage. Ooh, that could be a problem. Let me check. Now, I have a pistol, which would mean if I hit... Okay, so I don't have any skills that aid combat. I don't have melee or ranged combat skills. So I'm not getting that plus two. So my combat rolls are purely going to be body. Ooh, unless I can think of a way to use spirit or mind, which I can't really. Now, I have a pistol that does a plus one damage. So that would be doing four damage. The ghost has 12 health. So if I'm using my pistol, I've got to hit it three times. But I think I'd only be able to get one shot off before... I think maybe I could get one shot off before we can get to melee. Okay, so... There is an initiative. Basically, the vampire goes first, and then the opponent reacts. Which means I could shoot for four if I hit. He would then do five. But I've got heavy clothes. There's a minus one, so he would do four doesn't say it doesn't say that armor doesn't prove I mean if in corporal ghosts can move freely through solid objects okay so I would say that the ghosts attacks are not affected by my clothes because it's in corporal even though it says it can move freely through solid objects I would interpret that as being able to go through my armor as well so he's going to deal five points of damage so I can only survive one hit. Now, I need to do 12 damage to him. Now, if I do melee, I get a plus 3 damage. Because I've got Distort Flesh, which allows me to use my ability to cause more damage. So, I would be doing 6 damage on a melee hit. Which means I could kill him before his second attack, but I have to hit both times. Oh, Jesus. That's not good. Um, oh, crap. All right, let's, let's, let's give it a try. I'm going Because <laughs> the thing is, trying to run away is going to be almost as hard, isn't it? Because if I try to run away, I have to do a body... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. A body athletics check, which is basically I need to get a 7 plus. So, combat, I need to get a 7 plus. I mean, what's, what's the benefit of fighting this thing? There's no XP award, is there? Yeah, you don't get, do you get an XP award for killing, killing anything? I don't think you do, do you? I don't think you get XP... For just doing a event or from killing anybody, I don't think you actually get any extra XP. So it might just be worth running away. Um, ah, but hell, what the hell? I'll, I'll try and fight it. Right. So we are going to be trying to fight this ghost now. I don't have any advantage or disadvantage, do I? I mean, my posture is higher than his. Would that have an effect? I don't think so. It's a ghost. Doesn't doesn't think like normal people. It's just attacking. All right, so uh, I'm just rolling body, so I need a seven plus anyway, and I've only got the ability to make two rerolls. Oh, this could be this could be the end of the night. Because again, when your will goes down to zero, you get demotivated and you just bugger off home, don't do anything else. When your health goes down to zero, your, your demon takes over and just basically takes you home. But then you've got to figure out how to heal. Uh, 
That's going to be a problem. If I lose, that's going to be a problem. Pro pro problem. Let's have a butchers and see. Um, a vampire who feeds on human prey recovers all health. Uh, but if you don't, you just wake up with one health. All right, let's let's try and fight. I haven't I haven't any combat yet anyway. So let's let's have some combat. Night five. We've got some combat. We're fighting a ghost who's popped out, going. Ooh. Right. So we are going to fight the ghost. I've got to hit it twice to kill it. Because I'm doing six damage per hit. Three plus three for the distort flesh. He's going to be doing five. All right, let's go. First, we attack first. So I don't think I'm going to get any advantages. Nope. So I need a seven plus to hit the ghost. Jesus. Oh, dice gods, please. Yes, we hit. So we hit the ghost once. So I hit him once, I do six damage. Can't write. Right now the ghost attacks, and he has five damage. And then, uh, so we have a ghost, we hit, then we take five damage. So my health is now down to three. So we hit again. Oh God. Oh, goodness gracious. Come on. We hit again. I need a 7 plus. Crap. No. Okay, I need to use will. Ooh. Okay. I need to use will. Oh, God. Come on. Come on. Oh, I've got a 9, but it wasn't in the thing. I have to re-roll it. And that's, oh, come on. Come on. Ooh. Yes. My God. Yes. Thank God this game isn't D6s. We do six damage to the ghost. Oh man, I was a bit worried about that. Kill! Yeah, we kill the ghost. But like I say, we don't get anything from it. Um, okay, I think... So we defeat the ghost. We've completed the event. But I think I want to just make a quick check to see whether I recognize the ghost in any way. Because, again, maybe it'll give me a little bit of information. If I recognise the ghost, maybe that can help me, I don't know, find out some information that I could maybe use to get some help from the police, maybe? So I'm just going to make a quick check just to see whether I recognise anything about that ghost. Because, again, that can develop a story. So I'm going to make a, I think it would be mind investigation. So I don't have investigation, it's just a mind um, but it is a ghost, so it may not be easy to determine features. So I'm going to give myself a disadvantage, I think. So I'm getting a plus four to the roll. Just to see if there's anything familiar about the ghost. Um, but I am to give myself a disadvantage. So I'm taking the lower dice. Because you never know. So I got a six and I got a two. The six would have been a success, but because I gave myself a disadvantage, because the ghosts aren't always easily discernible in terms of who they are or what they are. So I gave myself a disadvantage, which means I take the two, which means I fail the roll. Okay, nothing, nothing, nothing gained, but nothing lost. I could have got some information if I passed. It was worth it, I think, for the story, I think. Right, let me just quickly make a bit of a note regarding that, and we will be back in a second. All right, so I've just I've just put down in my little journal, my little notebook here. So I made a mind investigation check. Do I recognise the ghost? Any interesting features? Now, does anything kind of stand out as being interesting, worth looking into more? You know, was it a murder victim? Was it one of my victims, for example? Uh, but I failed the roll because I had to take the lowest result. So okay, we can now continue the evening if I want to. I am injured. So it might be worth looking for another prey because that would then heal me. Um, okay, let's let's go back. So not a lot of space on camera here. So let's go back to our actions. Okay, so I don't need a favorite prey. I just need to find any kind of prey to to heal myself. Um, 
Mind Survival. So I think I'll do that. Alright, so I think I'm just going to hunt. Okay, yeah, how long does that take? How long do events take? doesn't say, does it? It doesn't say how long events take. So I'm going to assume... Yeah, it doesn't say. I'm going to assume one hour. It's just a little combat with a ghost. So I'm going to assume one hour. So we are now at 23.30. Now, the night is young. But I am not. And I am wounded. And I've got no will left. I've got one will left. So let's do some simple stuff. Uh, first of all, I want to try to heal. Um, so I want to try and hunt for prey. Um, now, again, this, this game doesn't have like criticals or critical failures on the rolls, but I'm thinking that if I roll a one on a test, then something really bad happens. <laughs> I think I may, I've mentioned this in a previous episode. There's no sort of critical failures or fumbles or anything like that. Um, and I think I mentioned that it, it looks like once you evolve a while, there will be certain things that you just can't fail. So I think I mentioned in a previous video that if I actually roll a one on a check and I can't re-roll it or anything, then something bad happens. I think that kind of makes a bit of sense. To me, anyway, because like I say, you can evolve your your skills, your abilities to the point where, even with a disadvantage, you just can't fail, and that sort of takes away a lot of the fun. It, it kind of takes away part of that, um, <laughs> part of the charm of RPGs. I mean, things go things go wrong, um, so I just got to hope I don't get ones. But I'm going to hunt for prey. So that I can heal. So I'm going to have a double meal tonight. So this is my seconds. So we're just going to do a basic hunt for prey. Just basic prey. Nothing, nothing special. No favorite. Doesn't have to be. Okay, well it doesn't have to be fresh then. I can actually eat something that's been dead for a while. Never mind. That all comes down within the hunt for prey. So I'm just going to. Do I want to move somewhere else? Uh, I've already killed one person here, haven't I? Ah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Right, so I'm going to hunt for prey. It is mind and survival. So I've got survival. My mind is four. So I'm going to get plus six to the roll. So I get four plus. I get an eight. So I am successful. So I am successful. I find my prey and I heal. So when you drink the blood... When you drink the blood... Of a human, we recover all lost health. Oh, actually, it's only when you feed. You don't necessarily have to kill. Okay, good. So we are now fully healed. Now, I mean, that's good. <laughs> I'm, not as, I'm, not, I'm not in as much danger as I was, but this is still a worrying stat. I really have to try and get my will... Maybe I'll do, maybe my next session, I'll just do the most basic things and just try and get Will back somehow. Because the only way you can get it back is through rest, I think. One point per night. So it's going to take me ages to get back my Will. Maybe I shouldn't have spent so much and been so free with it. Never mind. All right, so I... Bonk, bonk, bonk. I hunted my favorite prey. But again, it's still very, very early. At night, hunt for prey, one hour. Okay. So it is now half past midnight. What am I going to do for the rest of the night that's not going to rely on <laughs> re-rolling the dice? I think, I mean, normally I just get money. There's nothing else that I really need to do. that I Because the thing is, I can't really risk screwing up dice rolls. So I think for the rest of the night, I'm just going to earn some money. I mean, I could do things like fight. No, again, these all. I'll just do, just, I mean, doing it, honestly, you're, you're guaranteed 25 an hour. Doing it another way with a roll, you're basically getting the ability to have a chance of getting more. But if you fail, it can create problems. So I'm just going to do it normally. So I'm just going to work. How many hours? Four hours? I need to get back, then I? So I need an hour and a half to get back. Uh, sunrise at seven. 
So I'm going to work for five hours. At 25 an hour. So that's 125 bucks. And then at 05.30, I motorcycle. I go back to OC4, I go back to home, uh, and that will bring me to seven, yes? Well, oh, that's close. Finish. Again, I apologize about my handwriting. <laughs> so I get another $125. Another $125, so that's um, one, eight, one, nine, one, oh, is it? So five makes it 90, so that begins 10, so one, eight, 10, one, nine, 10, yep. So I've now got one, nine, 10. Okay. Cool, yep, sorry about the shake. All right. So we earned a little bit of money. We defeated a ghost, but there was absolutely no reward for that, but... I did make a little bit of an investigation check to find out if I recognized the ghost because you know maybe that can lead to a to a story to an event finding out who the who the ghost is and maybe looking into who killed them and where they're from and stuff like that. I mean if they're recently dead I could probably go to their house and steal stuff. Um but okay that is night 5 done. We get one XP, so we are now at nine XP. Oh, nearly enough to get another power. Okay. My will will go back up to two. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So I have plus one XP. So I've done that. Plus one will. And I've done that. Okay. Just This is just to let me remember that I've already, I've already boosted them back up. So don't do it again next lesson. Oh, next lesson. Talking like a teacher. Next session. Right. We are done for week... Sorry, not week. For night five. Now, the next... The next game, or the next session, is going to be week six. Sorry, night... What do I keep saying week? Night six, which is going to be the 3rd of November. And that's going to be a Thursday... What should we do there? Um, let's see what the event does, shall we? All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. I'm sorry this wasn't as uh, exciting as the last episode. But you can kind of see how the game's progressing. Um, I'm not sure how many more of these I'm going to do. I mean, I, I may take a pause for this game because there are a couple of other things I need to get done. Um, so may maybe I'll take a pause on this for a little while and then come back and then we'll do week six. But I think I'll take a, maybe I'll take a pause for this game for a little while. Like I say, I've got a couple of other games that I need to, another couple of videos that I need to get done. Um, and then we'll come back, I think. Unless, unless Jefferson and Bruno come out with some of the other games in the meantime, in English. <laughs> right, guys, thanks once again for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. I'm trying to get to 1,000 before the end of the year. Um, click the little bell if you want to get notified when I release my videos. Um, so yeah, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And may your dice never roll ones. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Stay safe.